Hello everyone, I'm Atisham Anwar. Welcome to the introductory session on B2B marketing, which is a fascinating area. I hope that you'll get value out of this uh, session and um, I'll be able to share some of the knowledge that I've gained over the years while working in this interesting area. So let's get started. So this picture kind of shows you uh, kind of the playgrounds that I had had the opportunity to play at. So this picture was taken a couple of years ago at Caterpillar Proving Grounds in Tucson, Arizona, United States. And the machines that you see at the back are DAT track type tractors, or also called as dozers. Uh, and this is an industry leading product, a fantastic machine, which does amazing things, it costs about a million dollars. So it's not cheap. And I had the privilege of being a product manager for this product. Um, along with a number of other products that I have uh, had the same opportunity uh, as either marketing manager, industry manager. So uh, yeah, so this has been my world and I've been very fortunate uh, about that. So over my career, I've been involved with launching, relaunching, developing, implementing, reviving, mostly successfully uh, different brands or B2B products uh, and sometimes not so successfully and that's part of the game. But this slide kind of gives you uh, some of the key brands or products that I've been involved with in some shape or form. And it's been a very exciting journey and I've learned lots uh, from my successes and more so from my failures. Uh, mostly I've been involved with Caterpillar. I've kind of worked with a couple of different dealerships, um, kind of spent about 15 years in total. Um, but recently, I did have a bit of a change in my career. So from having yellow blood, which uh, Caterpillar is known for, I was uh, able to kind of move to another fantastic company or a B2B brand called Cummins. So from yellow blood, I've got red blood in me now, uh, which I always had. Uh, I get about it, uh, but it's a, it's a very, very powerful B2B brand. Some of you may have come across it already. Uh, the building that you see in this um, picture is uh, is the branch that I basically lead as general manager. It's a brand new facility. Um, and again, that was one thing which really kind of excited me. I had the opportunity to really kind of lay the foundation for this branch, the business lines, and really kind of develop it from scratch. So it's been a very exciting journey and I'll be sharing some of the examples from, uh, from this as well as we go along. Now, some of you would be wondering as to, okay, um, he seems to kind of have a lot of practical experience in B2B marketing, but how come he's, you know, um, doing this uh, kind of a session here? So this is my other side. Um, I'm very academic focused. Um, I love teaching, training. Uh, I've done my master's of science in management that was 2018. This is when this picture was taken. The two beautiful girls that you see are my daughters. Uh, and yeah, luckily I've been able to pay off my student loan. They didn't really have much uh, thanks to my, my work. But uh, yeah, so this is my other side. I really kind of enjoy teaching, training, um, developing different courses. I do a lot of workshops, even uh, marketing strategy courses um, uh, for university students as well as business professionals. So yeah, so this is kind of something that I like doing and that's the reason why you're going to see me talking to you today. All right, so before we get uh, further, I would like to kind of start with an exercise. So what do you see on the screen? It's a pretty simple question, but that's not what the exercise is. So this is a styrofoam cup, one of those, you know, throw away cups, disposable cups that is used for different, uh, different applications, uh, you know, for picnics, you know, at, uh, offices, home, you name it. So the question that I have for you is, how would you go about selling this styrofoam cup to an end use customer? So think about a common person, somebody like you, myself, in your household setting, how would you sell this to that person? So I'd like to if you're just going to take a few secs and jot down a couple of thoughts, uh, how would you going to go about selling this to an end use consumer? 
Now, I would like to ask another question. Same product. Now, I would like you to answer this question as to how you're gonna go about selling this product to a B2B or a business consumer or a business customer. So now, instead of thinking about a you know, common person like you and myself, think about a hotel chain, uh, a restaurant, uh, think about a factory or a business or an office which is buying these cups for their employees, for their customers, for whatever the use may be. So just think about how you would sell this to them. Just think about those. Once you have done that, now I would like you to compare your notes between the two. What is different? There are some similarities for sure, but more important, you would have observed some differences. And that's kind of the something that I really would like to emphasize that a B2B customer, B2B marketing, B2B sales is different from selling to a consumer because their needs, their wants, the process that they go about solving that issue or getting uh, making a decision about that product is very, very different. Their criteria is very different, the process, the number of people involved. And that's what we're gonna talk about uh, as we get into this session. Okay, so what are the learning outcomes uh, from this session? So first, I would like to talk about the why. Why is B2B important? Or why do we need to study it? Uh, next, uh, what are the difference between B2B and B2C? Uh, business to business and business to consumer marketing. So we're gonna try to kind of compare the two and uh, highlight the differences. Um, then I would like to cover the purchase decisions, B2B purchase decision. How are those decisions made? What are some of the nuances, players, what makes them different? Just so that we get a good understanding of how they occur so that we can come up with marketing strategies and tactics to influence that. And then I'm gonna cover some of the more basic, more fundamental B2B marketing strategies. Uh, another thing that I've done is I've, that I've kind of built in a business scenario. Um, and I'm gonna using, I'll be using that throughout the session to help you apply the various concepts uh, that we study. So hopefully that's gonna help uh, with, your, with your learning and your retention. And then lastly, I also kind of talk B2B marketing is a career option. I've been you know, very fortunate to be uh, part of that uh, area as a profession. I would like to kind of share some of those insights and hopefully kind of encourage you to take that on as a career option. Okay, so why B2B marketing? Why is it important? Why do we need to worry about it? Does it really make it, is it a lot different from B2C? Marketing, I mean, marketing is marketing, so should, shouldn't really have to kind of pay too much attention to B2B versus B2C. Whatever works in B2C, you should be able to use the same um, strategies and tactics and all that on B2B. So you can make that argument, but I don't buy that. And I'll kind of try and cover some of the reasons why. So first off, why is B2B important? B2B marketing, uh, I can give you some examples, but it does entail a lot of dollars, a lot of volume, a lot of, uh, again, there have been some estimates done up that B2B marketing or B2B revenues or sales are way higher than B2C sales in general, in aggregate. The other piece is even if you kind of talk about individual buyers, so when businesses buy, I mean, they do buy in bulk. They buy a lot of values, a lot of dollars. So it's a pretty, pretty big, big deal. So again, that kind of makes B2B marketing unique because you're not talking about, you know, low dollar item. For example, a small, I would say computer or a chip, whatever, selling to an end use consumer, you're selling big machines, big equipment or stuff in bulk, large quantities 
to 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 cons to business consumers. So it's large volumes, large uh, volumes and values, and these are very complex decisions. Again, we can talk about that a little bit later. But you talk about very complex products and services, so they're not straightforward. I mean, when you talk about industrial equipment, you talk about you know industrial softwares, technology. So these are very complex products and services that people are selling and buying. So that also kind of makes them unique or different from B to C um, and makes them more important because you're talking about very complex products and they are very critical to the business because think about, you know, a plant, a factory, which has a very, you know, a lot of machinery which produces different products. So one, even one of the machines goes down, I mean, the whole factory is, is kind of stopped. So again, that kind of makes the B2B buying more critical, more important. Uh, and basically, it could be a key input to the overall value chain of the organization. And that's what happens because again, for example, if you are, let's say you are a chemical plant, now you are purchasing a lot of raw materials that you can convert into chemical products. And if you don't get those raw materials, you can't produce your products, you cannot satisfy your customers. So you are very dependent on those, those items that you're buying. So that kind of makes the B2B uh, marketing more critical and more important. And it plays a big role in organizations' competitiveness because again, for example, um, I'm a business buyer, I'm, a, I'm an organization. So the stuff that I buy makes a big contribution to how I'm able to satisfy my customers and how I'm able to compete. So again, a lot of uh, you, you would have studied or you're going to study about competitive advantage and that's a key concept, marketing concept. Organizations need to have competitive advantage in order to survive and thrive and grow. And B2B marketing or B2B purchasing is a key contributor to that. So that's, all, again, another point why B2B marketing is important or critical for organizations. What does this picture remind you and the caption that I have here? And this is true. I know there's a little bit of kind of humor in there, but uh, B2B marketing um, or B2B purchasing on the other side does involve a lot of people. They're professional buyers, professional procurement agents or buying agents. And part of their role or part of their job is to make sure that they get the best value for their organizations. And that can also kind of add a certain level of complexity to this whole process. But at the same time, that also kind of goes to support the point that these are really important decisions for organizations. So B2B marketing is pretty important. So let's just kind of talk about an example just to kind of hit some of these points um, and drive that message, the same message that I have. SAP. So I hope that most of you would have seen or would be aware of this product. So this is the, you know, world leading ERP or Enterprise Resource Planning Software. Uh, and basically, that's basically a software system that really kind of goes across the organization. So it basically kind of combines all the different isolated systems into one big system, which is kind of the backbone of the organization because everything is handled through that. So it is a big deal when the organization is looking to buy uh, or get a new ERP system. So in my lifetime, I've been involved with a couple of uh, ERP uh, transformation or ERP projects. Uh, and adoption, and it is a big, big undertaking. First off, this is not a cheap product. It costs you millions of dollars. It's, it's a very complex product. So again, I mean, on the buying side, you really need to kind of understand what uh, what do you need? What what modules do you need? What uh, you know? How would you kind of make this work? What steps would be required for you to kind of really implement it in your organization and get the most value out of it? And similarly, from the selling side or marketing side, you need to really understand how your product fits into your customer's business and how you can really kind of show them the value that it brings in and add that value to the organization. So it's again ERP 
SAP, uh, I mean, this is a very critical product, very complex product, high volume, high dollar. Um, and then it really kind of is a key input to how the organization operates, how it becomes efficient, and how it becomes competitive. Uh, because again, it kind of feeds into the competitive advantage because if you've got a really good system that can really you know, make your operation efficient, um, more effective, then obviously that's going to really make a difference because if your competition does not have similar system or have a different system and your system is uh, superior, then you can imagine how what a difference it can make. And then lastly, I mean, you've got, you know, you have to talk to different people to really kind of get uh, your product uh, adopted at an organization. So you have to talk to IT, you have to talk to operations, you have to talk to procurement, you talk to business folks, sales, finance. It's, yeah, so it's a pretty complex team. So just to kind of show you how uh, B2B marketing works at a high level, but more importantly, what makes it important. So this was the example. So now we want to talk about some of the differences between B2B versus B2C, but let's just kind of go and uh, talk about some of those specific ones, uh, which really kind of make the two difference. And one of the reasons why I really want to do that is that a lot many times the argument is made that, hey, B2C B or B2B is the same, because again, you talk about marketing, at the end of the day, you're selling a product. Uh, so you shouldn't really have to worry too much about the differences because the fundamental marketing strategies would apply. And I agree um, that marketing is marketing. And even whether you are in a B2B setting or a B2C, um, you are kind of applying the similar concepts. But B2B does have a lot of differences with B2C. We have already kind of talked about some of those uh, differences under the what makes it important. But we, let's get into a few other uh, ones. and. Uh, and maybe some of the ones that we already covered in a little bit more detail. So first off, in terms of B2B versus B2C, most of the B2B customers are very cost or value focused. So again, we talked about, you know, we have, I showed you that side of people justifying their jobs. So part of those responsibility or accountability of these procurement um, agents or procurement managers is to really get the highest value for the organization. So they really want to drive the cost out, make it more efficient. So by default, B2B customers are at a high level looking for the highest value or trying to kind of reduce their cost as much as possible. So, so that does kind of create a, a bit of a different mindset that you need to appreciate and then kind of work with. Typically, you're dealing with fewer larger customers. Again, uh, does not really hold true all the time because you may also be servicing a lot of smaller players uh, or, or smaller B2B customers as well. But typically, uh, you do have a few large players which are really going to drive most of your business, uh, and that kind of makes your job really difficult uh, because your your uh, bargaining power uh, is not that high, and that kind of creates some challenges. So, but again, that's kind of the relationship in B2B buying or B2B marketing most of the time. Um, so just think about if you are an auto, auto part manufacturer, you are kind of, let's say you're producing headlights that you sell to the likes of Toyotas, Volvos, Volkswagen, you name it. But again, those automobile manufacturers are huge, whereas we may be really small, a player for them. So again, typically that's the case, not always but uh, you need to really kind of appreciate uh, and understand that. And then there's just too much competition. Now I know my, my kind of colleagues in the B2C, B2C or business to consumer side may argue that, hey, you know, there's just too much competition on, on that side too. And, and I fully respect that. But in the B2B space in a lot of products, I mean, I do find that there's just too much competition. So this slide kind of lists, um, I think, most of the major players when it comes to heavy or construction equipment. Again, it's not a complete list, but that's going to show you a lot of competition exists. So this is, yeah, one of the industries that has served uh, in the past. So obviously, we're going to look this up. But yeah, there's just too many 
and Caterpillar is just one of uh, tons of manufacturers out there in that space. So a lot of competition in that area that you need to work with. And then in terms of buying cycles, typically, I mean, B2B buyers have uh, our procurement is long business cycles. So it's not like, I mean, and sometimes it is, but in most of the cases, the buying cycles are really long. It could be anywhere from a couple of months to a couple of years to five, 10 years. So think about if you are uh, a B2B buyer who's kind of looking to buy uh, uh, machinery for their new plant. Now the planning exercise starts years ago and they may engage some of the potential suppliers early on and then even before the uh, you know first you know construction begins at site which is also a multi multi-year process so you can imagine how long these business cycles are uh, again in case of certain products or certain type of business relationship they may be way shorter but typically they are way longer so you need to really kind of work with that work with that pace uh, that those customers are working with. and then the products and services are really complex so earlier on we talked about the sap example uh, again that's a pretty complex uh, software product uh, that the companies are looking to purchase so it's it's not something which is straightforward out of the box it's like windows that you just kind of install and run it's pretty complicated. There's a lot of discussion required to understand what the customer needs are, what are the options available, and what's the best way to kind of meet those expectations. And then you've got the budgets, the timelines, the capabilities, the people side, change management. You, it's, a, it's a pretty big undertaking, as I mentioned earlier. So that's the case in case of most of the P2P product, but not all. There are you know, simpler products and services too, but typically they are pretty complex in nature. And then there's a very important concept uh, in B2B marketing of a buying center. So basically this, this is basically what, uh, it, it basically consists of all the people, all the different stakeholders that are involved in that uh, B2B purchase decision. And we're gonna talk about this a little bit later uh, when we are discussing the B2B purchasing, but this is also very different because it's not the same in B2C. I mean, typically it's just one person who's making the decision. Now the person may be influenced by their spouse, by their kids, by their you know, social pressures, but it's just not the same uh, level of, you know, uh, I would say stakeholders or involvement as you'll find in B2B. So that's another kind of thing which kind of makes it. Another one, and this is, I feel a little bit bad kind of talking about it, but, but it is so true um, that B2B products, most of them are pretty uninteresting and boring. To most of us, to most of the people out there, so that makes it life of a marketer difficult. But at the same time, it can open up way more opportunities for for them. But the product that you see on the screen is Lincoln. So these are they are the world's leading brand when it comes to welding units. And I bet you you would have seen this machine at least once in your life. Because anybody who has been to a construction site or passed it, a building under construction, anywhere where there is some kind of welding work going on, I bet you this machine would be there because they are the world's leading, very solid reputation, great equipment, great brand uh, overall in the B2B space, but honestly not very interesting product. So that kind of creates that challenge as I mentioned for B2B uh, that how do you kind of really connect on an emotional basis? How do you kind of make it fun and interesting? Um, because these products by by very nature are very uninteresting or boring. So that's another challenge that uh, the B2B marketeers have to work with. So I've got another example, just to kind of highlight some of the things that we talked about B2B versus B2C. So think of a generator. So power generator unit, that you're going to use to kind of power your house, your RV, um, you know, different buildings, that sort of stuff. So I was involved with this sale, with this project. So the building that you see in 
this slide is your Royal Inland Hospital in Kamloops, BC. This is the city that I live in. This is the largest kind of regional hospital um, recently constructed, and they were looking for a backup power generator unit uh, for their hospital. And again, it's a very critical application because think of it, I mean, you've got people who are being, you know, who are receiving surgery, and if, or they're getting life support, they're on ventilator, and if the power goes off, I mean, your generator needs to kick off, right? So it's a very critical uh, kind of application. So for this hospital, even though, I mean, the administration is not that technical, but for them, this purchase was very, very important. Again, in terms of that purchase buying center, there were different people involved. So there was obviously the you know maintenance folks, some of the administrative doctors were involved. They had also had a consultant helping them out with what kind of you know support you know what kind of uh, equipment that they need. They also had some representation from the government. Uh, they also got some input from their you know uh, just from their uh, general hospital staff. So there were a lot of people involved in that decision. It was just not one or two people making that call. So that kind of what uh, B2B uh, purchase decisions are like. And the other piece was, I mean, in terms of that solution itself, I mean, they're just like, I mean, what kind of, you know, power do you need? Where are you gonna have it in this case? I mean, one of the challenges was that you couldn't really have, because this hospital is in downtown, so you couldn't really have that power generator on on the main floor or on this next to the street because of the sound pollution uh, perspectives or uh, so you, it had to be kind of installed at the top of the roof and this was happening after the construction was done so there was a whole set of logistics involved as to how that solution is going to work or get there so yeah that's just one aspect of the complexity uh, of that solution but again the point that i was like to drive drive home was multiple stakeholders involved complex product high dollar high critical criticality to business and then this decision kind of I think it took over a year uh, from the initial conversations to when the when the unit got installed so very long decision cycles so that's what makes me to be uh, marketing different from your B2C okay so let's talk about business scenario and this is very similar to the generator example that I gave. So hopefully it would be easy for you to kind of apply and think about some of the concept that you have studied so far. And we'll be kind of coming back to the same business scenario later on after covering more concepts. So the scenario is that you have got this company called Uninterrupted Power. And basically they're in the business of selling power generation equipment to household customers or consumers. So they basically sell to these individual um, consumers but now they want to grow their business and one of the things one of the major areas that they have identified for growing their business in is b2b so they want to make that switch from b2c to b2b market so the question is what challenges do you think this company is going to face when it moves from b2b oh, sorry b2c business to consumer to b2b or business to business what are some of the challenges or issues it's gonna run into? So just kind of think about, you know, a company which had a B2C mindset and they were selling very effectively to a B2C customer, but now they're moving to a different segment, which is B2B. So what are the differences that they will run into? What are some of the challenges that they will see as you're making that transition? So that's kind of the question that you see on the screen. So I'll let you kind of think about it, just make a few notes. Um, and hopefully you can apply the concept that I kind of covered up until now. So we're going to talk about B2B purchase decisions. So as I kind of mentioned earlier, in order to understand uh, what kind of marketing strategies or B2B marketing strategies you can leverage, the first step is to understand the B2B purchase decision process because it's quite a bit different than your B2C process. So we'll get into that a little bit. So what are the factors that influence B2B purchase decisions? 
So first, these are the situation, they are the situation factors. So this could be in terms of, uh, you know, what's the situation around uh, that purchase decision. Sometimes it's say, you know, first time buy, could be modified rebuy, or just could be a straight rebuy situation. So that, that's one uh, of the situation. It could be, uh, you know, sometimes the customers need it, um, has got six months, period to make that decision. Sometimes they need the product right away. They may have a breakdown type of situation. So the urgency could be another one. Um, how important is that decision or critical that decision is for that organization because sometimes it could be a critical input or it could be just a simple supply or sometimes it could be a safety related item or service. So those are the different uh, situations uh, that may impact the business purchase decision. So you need to appreciate uh, all those. The organization factors or organization demographics, as I like to kind of call those, it could be the size of the organization, the complexity, the business, you know, the purchasing formality, uh, what kind of, uh, you know, uh, how many people there are, is it a international, multinational organization, it's a national organization, it's a private company, it's a government company. So those factors, demographic, organization demographics, also kind of make a big difference and contribute to the business purchase decisions. So that's the other uh, set of factors that you need to appreciate. And lastly is the stakeholders. And if you recall earlier on, I did talk about a buying center and you know, B2B purchasing, having those several um, stakeholders uh, in the buying process. So that kind of makes it really kind of complex. And that's a key influence or factor in your business purchase decisions that you need to understand. Uh, this is a slide that I had covered earlier on, but I would like to kind of go a little bit deeper into that. So as you can see, there are different stakeholders mentioned on this slide. So you've got buyer, you've got the user, you've got influencers, you've got um, a buying agent, operations, maintenance, you name it. I mean, they've got different people who are involved. It could be an owner, finance, so different stakeholder involved in any B2B purchase decision. And what kind of makes it kind of interesting and complex at the same time is that these stakeholders may vary depending on the business purchase situation that you're dealing with. Sometimes you may just have one or two people make the call, making the call. Sometimes you may have several people all the way up to the CEO of the organization. Um, and then at the same time, these roles also kind of change or people kind of change roles as they you know, move in between different purchase situations or even as the purchase situations evolve over time. So as a B2B marketeer, you need to really need to understand who are the key stakeholders within the organization, outside the organization, who need to be influenced um, for the outcome that you're looking for or who have a bearing on your on your decision. And then also can understand and appreciating what kind of perspective do they bring in to that purchase to see and what are their specific needs and want? What are, because if you think about it, the requirements that a finance person may have would be very different from an operations person because the operations person may be responsible only for the productivity and may not as be as much concerned about the cost, whereas the finance, for those people, it could be that the cost or the initial capital expenditure is the key criteria that you they need to you know manage and that's what they're concerned about. So you have got two key stakeholders with very different set of expectation requirements. So again as a BG marketer you need to kind of understand that. So when it comes to business purchase decisions, um, organizations have different processes around how they go about making those decisions. They've got different philosophies, different mechanisms. So I'm just gonna hit on some of the most common ones just to give, give you a bit of a sense as to what that looks like. So usually the bigger organizations look for pre-qualification before they even send you a request for quote because they're not just going to work with anybody. They have got different, you know, a given set of criteria that you want. They want the suppliers to meet before they would even consider them for, for any, any, uh, any business. Um, and then you've got the request for quotation where they're going to send a request to to the organization which can potentially support or provide the product service that they're looking for. Um, 
tender is another very common way, especially with the governments that they do that, and that kind of really kind of puts pressure on the the suppliers or vendors to offer the lowest cost because that's how most of the tenders are evaluated. But again, um, you you still have the opportunity to kind of really kind of show what value you bring to the table. Um, Contracts in another way, uh, organizations purchase so that they can, you know, bundle up their purchase requirement for a year, two year, or even three year period or longer, uh, and they will just kind of put that uh, contract together. And once you have the product, you just need to kind of refill those orders under that contract. Um, owning versus renting is another key deciding factor, similar to uh, even individual consumers, uh, but a lot of organizations, you know, some own equipment, others would rent, some would finance. Uh, so that kind of plays a, you know, plays a really big role in B2B uh, purchasing um, the way people, you know, B2B cons consumers or B2B uh, companies choose to buy. And there are occasions where they'll just kind of work through third parties. So even though they are the end users, but they will kind of hire somebody else to kind of provide that service through somebody else. So that can include bring in some more complexity, but that's how some of uh, the organizations also work. And that can some challenges for the B2B market as well. So yeah, another, just to give you a sense of what uh, some of these uh, different mechanisms are through which organizations or businesses buy, because you need to understand that. Value versus price. And I know this is a very, very important concept uh, in market is, uh, you know, price and value are two different things. They may be interrelated, but uh, maybe they are very, very different. So value is what you get from a product or service, um, whereas price is just the, you know, dollar uh, amount that you are getting in return. So you may be offering way more value than what your product is costing the customer. And that's how B2B buyers buy because they buy on value. Again, early on, if you remember, I did kind of tell you that B2B buyers are really cost conscious and they're looking to reduce their cost. And that's why they've got, you know, professional buyers because they are spending a lot of money and their competitiveness is tied to their buying. So they're, it is in their best interest to keep their, you know, purchase costs as low as possible. But essentially what everybody's looking for that value because if they buy something for cheap, but then they don't really get the support that they need or the machine breaks down or the, it results in an inferior, inferior quality product that their customers don't buy or uh, they don't like, then obviously that's, that's where they're not getting the value that they need. So it's not about the cost or price, it's basically about value. And B2B marketing is all about value. Uh, and that's one thing that I'm going to talk a little bit more in detail when we get to your um, door discussion around uh, B2B marketing strategies. But again, from a B2B uh, purchasing uh, process perspective, I mean, the consumers, the customer, B2B customer, they will always tell you that they are looking for the lowest cost. Uh, and that's how they would like to value you. But essentially, everybody's looking for the highest value. Uh, they may have a budget, but sometimes you may have to change that budget or influence it if you're able to show them that what they really need and the solution that you're bringing to the table is going to offer them a higher value. So remember that concept and we'll talk about that a little bit more in detail. Okay, so I'll give you an example just to kind of explain uh, some of these concepts that we talked about under the B2B purchase um, process. So the machines that you see, these are the 797, Caterpillar 797 haul trucks. So these are mining trucks, so they're really huge. Um, so this picture was taken in Canada um, in the oil sands. This is a pretty unique operation where these uh, trucks, these are all full of oil sands. So basically that's oil filled with, uh, with sand essentially. And then they uh, put it into a process plant and they kind of separate the oil of bitumen from this. So each truck, it is to give you a sense, it carries about 400 tons of um, oil sands and each tire is basically 12 feet tall. So I'm about I'm six feet. So if I'm standing next to this truck, I would be only up until half 
of the tire height. So you can imagine these things are huge. So I was involved with this project where these companies, these oil companies, they are under a lot of pressure, as you know, from the environmental side on the environmental impact. And again, one of the uh, I mean, uh, areas where they were struggling was their emissions targets or their emissions that their equipment was creating. And then these trucks are huge. They've got huge engines, diesel engines, and obviously they were kind of creating a lot of uh, emissions. So we were in touch with the customer that was working for the Caterpillar dealer, Finning at the time, uh, who was responsible for these products in that territory. So having this conversation with the customers, their maintenance folks, they came in and said, hey, you know, we would like to reduce the emissions on these, uh, these trucks. And at the same time, they were having some reliability issues on the engines too. And said, okay, yeah, that sounds like a good idea. We got the factory involved, engineers involved. We came up with the solution. I was a marketing manager. I got that solution in front of me. Cost of $1.5 million, not cheap, but this truck is in excess of, I would say around uh, $5 million or $6 million. Uh, but anyways, I got the solution. There's something with the customer wanted. Would have really gonna help them reduce their emissions and then also improve the reliability where they were having some issues. I said, hey, we have got a winning product. I go and present to those customers and they said, hey, wait a minute, I like, we like the solution. Now, mind you, these are the maintenance fo folks. We need to kind of bring operations involved. So you got the operations involved, they come, came in, uh, then we got finance involved, other safety, all these other people start coming in because they were all those stakeholders that need to be consulted. Um, and they were part of the buying center. So I was taken aback in the beginning because honestly, we hadn't really done our homework completely. And as all these people kind of came in, they started asking all these questions, which we did not have the answer to. So anyways, you have to kind of go back, took all those considerations in. Operations had some, some special requirements because again, they didn't want to have uh, too much shutdown of their equipment while this repower or the solution was applied. So that was one of their considerations. Um, the, um, you know, the safety folks, they like the, the uh, in lower emissions, but um, there was an additional cost for it. And then that's what the operations folks did not like because they, hey, we would have to kind of pay that additional cost. Same with the maintenance folks because they, like, we don't really have the budget for it. So it was a pretty big kind of mess. So anyways, we were able to go back to the drawing board. A couple of things just to give you an idea how the B2B marketing strategies work or some of the things that we used to kind of win that deal. One we did was that we said, okay, what's the savings that the customer is going to get compared to their existing solution? So on, on the older engine, they were spending way more on the fuel, for example, on maintenance costs. We were able to estimate that and kind of show them that, hey, you'll be spending $1.5 million, but you'll be saving a lot of this money. So that was one uh, thing that we did. Another thing that we did was that in order to kind of address the concern around the shutdown, Peter, we said, okay, we're not gonna, we're gonna apply this solution when the truck is supposed to be down anyways for, for its regular service. So that that time uh, comes down and that kind of appeased the operations folks. And then in terms of budget, we were also able to get some of the, uh, you know, environmental folks involved from the company and turned out that they had some extra dollars available to them towards some of those, um, you know, environmental initiatives. And we were able to use those dollars towards uh, these, uh, these steam powers. So again, as you kind of work through all those stakeholders, we were able to kind of, you know, address what they really wanted and looking for in the solution. And then you showcase their value by doing that cost benefit analysis, by bringing in some of the value from within the organization and those tying it to all the benefits that they were getting. And then as a result, we got the deal. And uh, yeah, so each solution as I mentioned was about $1.5 million. And we sold about, I think about 50 to 60 of those uh, in five years. So yeah, so it's a pretty, pretty good neat project that I was involved with. Okay, so coming back to the business scenario. So it's the same one that we discussed before. The only difference is the questions. So you remember the situation already, so I won't repeat that. So the first question is, what information about the decision-making process in the B2B context is required to develop your marketing strategy? So what would you like to know? Uh, what information do you need around how B2B decision-making decisions are made 
in in the B2B marketing that you market that you are going after. Um, and then the next question is, what items can you use to show value to your customer? So what are some of the ways you can show value in your solution to your customer? So just at a high level, what are some of the ways? So you are kind of providing them with this, these power solutions. So what are some of the things you could show them? which is not just cost, I mean, which is the other side, the benefits that the customer is gonna get, the savings, the efficiency, the reliability, those sort of things. So you, you just gonna think about that and make a list. So yeah, I'll give you a few seconds to think through these two questions and apply the concept that we covered so far. Now that we have developed a good understanding of B2B purchase decisions, and how they are made, the process uh, that they go about uh, getting those decisions. Let's cover some of the marketing strategies, the B2B marketing strategies that you could use to be effective in this space. So the first one I would like to talk about is relationship selling. So B2B marketing is long-term in nature. So you need to kind of have a long-term perspective as you go about developing those relationships. And that should be built into your marketing programs, your marketing strategy. You need to have that kind of a mindset going in. So this is not just one time, you know, purchase uh, or relationship. This is long-term. So you really need to kind of build your marketing program around that relationship selling uh, concept. Next is about the support services and again, in terms of the complexity of the products and the expectations from the B2B customers, you need to have after-sales support. And it's a big part of, of the value that you bring to the table because that's how people are able to get the most value out of your products and services. So it's a really important aspect. So, and it's a very critical strategy that you could use. And think of it as, as those crutches, right? Because you'll be kind of making customers become really dependent on you. And that really kind of makes, you know, this relationship uh, more worthwhile for both the parties because then you're able to support them, not with initially with, as you sell the product, but through the, out the, you know, throughout its use. So again, it's a very kind of important part. And the companies who don't get that, who just kind of focus on one time or they're just going to focus on selling the product and not on the support side, they kind of lose out um, in the long run and and by the way i mean usually the support services is, is where you make most of your profit as well so that's that side uh, too uh, so that's another very effective b2b strategy uh, customization is another big one because again typically you are dealing with very larger bigger customers they've got unique needs so you do have the ability or the opportunity to customize your solution that can really can help you you know differentiate yourself from competition, really develop that long-term relationship with the customer, really kind of get, you know, in bed with them as a partner. Uh, so customization is also a very effective B2B marketing strategy. But now again, it's not for everybody, but this could be uh, very, very effective. Uh, some of the ways you could do that is, you know, you can jointly develop some product or services, you can integrate the systems where the supply chains are integrated or, um, yeah, even in terms of people, you could have uh, people work, your people working for a customer or vice versa. You could have people who are kind of on joint payroll um, teams working together. So yeah, there are a lot of ways you can really kind of customize your solution or your product and services to the customers. And that really kind of strengthens the relationship. That's a very potent marketing strategy. Personal selling is a very common one because again, Usually the B2B products, as we kind of studied earlier or discussed earlier, are more complex, they're not that straightforward, and there are multiple stakeholders involved, long buying cycles. So personal selling is usually the best way to really kind of engage with those customers, really kind of meet their needs, make them understand how this product or service could help benefit, and then also kind of support them through its use. Uh, because the customers are bound to have issues as they even after purchase. Um, so yeah, so that's why personal selling is a key uh, B2B marketing strategy for most of the products. And a lot of companies, I mean, the key differentiator is how effective 
and trustworthy their uh, sales forces. Branding. Yeah, this is one of the areas which I think is needs a lot of more attention in the B2B space. Um, so I'm personally very passionate about it, so I wanted to bring it up. So B2B branding is an area that needs a lot of investment. A lot of companies have already realized that and they're doing it, but a lot more needs to be done. So again, branding is about how, you know, to me, branding is about how you show up in the marketplace, how do you, you know, connect with the customers on an emotional basis and in a consistent way and that kind of makes it really difficult for the b2b products because usually their products are very technical very complex in nature uh, and then the other piece is that um, it's it kind of involves multiple stakeholders not only on the customer side but also on the on the internal and the company side that product or services touches so many different hands so a key piece is how your employees support your branding strategy uh, but anyways i mean we can go for 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 a long time on this topic but again b2b branding is another effective area that the organization need to invest um, and we can talk about this and the sales in my uh, b2b sales and b2b branding but these are two areas that i'm really very passionate about um, and we can talk about those two areas in detail later so one company that i would like to use an example as just to kind of drive home these different points that we covered around b2b marketing strategies so is after mining and i would encourage you to kind of go on to their website have a look it's very it's a fantastic company i've kind of seen it grow over the years it's a really young, young company i would say about 15 years they just had their 15 anniversary i know the management i know the uh, the ceo that who started this all so i've kind of seen them grow but it's a very very our successful company be in the B2B space and they are all about relationship marketing because the owner has really kind of spent the time working closely with the partner, different partners, customers directly face to face just to kind of develop the relationship and making sure that they have a longer term perspective to it. So they've got these relationships with uh, mining customers across the globe. Um, they have kind of built a lot of support services. Again, their business is heavy welding and they've developed these what are called ground engaging tool that goes on different mining equipment as you are kind of digging the earth. Um, so they have developed a lot of support services and customized services for their customers. Uh, and that's why customers love them because again, they can really customize or they're not cheap. They're, they're pretty expensive, but the customization and support services that they provide that really kind of makes them different. Um, and then they've got, a, you know, Salesforce, which is really, you know, trustworthy um, and uh, customers treat them as trusted advisors. So they have been very effective in terms of putting their Salesforce in. And then they do a really awesome job in terms of their B2B branding. And one of the few companies who actually do a really good job. And as you can see on this picture, I mean, after their brand, they have got these these masks and these claws. They kind of really kind of use to really kind of signify uh, and make the product uh, and branding really kind of interesting. And I've got a lot of other examples that I would share in the following up session on uh, on B2B branding. Um, but yeah, it's a very great company. I would like you to kind of go in and do some research on it and just kind of use leverage all of these B2B marketing strategies that I discussed so far. Okay, back to the business scenario. Again, it's the same scenario that we have been talking about. We had a, you know, it's a power gen company moving from B to C to B to B. So we've kind of answered a few questions earlier on. And now the recent question is, what marketing strategies would you recommend to be successful in the new business venture? So again, if you recall in the earlier exercises, we talked about, hey, what are the differences or challenges that they would expect to see between B2C versus B2B as they move to B2B. And then we have talked about what are, you know, what are the things that they need to understand in terms of the business B2B purchase decisions as they kind of move into that spirit. How are those decisions made? Who are the stakeholders? Uh, how are they buying? What kind of um, needs and wants and considerations that they have? And then what are some of the ways you can show your value to those customers? And now the question, the last question is what marketing strategies you could use to be effective in that spec? What are some of the ways you could do 
what are the things that you can focus on in terms of marketing strategy to be successful. So I'll let you kind of think this through and uh, make some notes. Okay, so this is kind of my last slide before we call it a day for today, B2B marketing as a career choice. So again, I'm a little bit biased. Of course I am because this is the area that I'm very really passionate about. This is where I've kind of spent most of my career. But um, I truly believe that this is an excellent career choice for my peers. I would like to you when I was uh, at the business school and finishing up, I really wanted to kind of get into a consumer goods company because that's, those are the epitome of branding and marketing and rightly so. But for some reasons, I was not able to, and I think luckily that instead I got into a B2B uh, marketing space. And I haven't really turned back. And what I really enjoyed in this side is that the opportunities are immense. Again, I don't want to down, you know, speak down about the B2C side. I mean, it's a fantastic area in terms of marketing. I think they are way ahead of the B2B marketing uh, market is, but at the same time, there's way more competition on that side. Plus, a lot of those concepts and strategies are really mature, whereas in the B2B marketing space, I think there's way more opportunity because first, I mean, marketing hasn't really had a very, very important role in the past. And then the B2B marketing, not everybody gets it. A lot of people just can try and can apply what they've learned in B2C or don't do anything uh, in terms of marketing. Um, and then the complexity around the products and services and the business purchase process, I mean, that just really kind of make this marketing job for B2B marketers way more interesting and rewarding. And if you get it right, I can guarantee that you really kind of be very successful in your career and you won't regret. Now, one of the myths that I would like to um, do, uh, to really kind of address at this point, a lot of people think that, hey, if you want to get into B2B marketing, business to business, you need to have a technical background. That's not true. Uh, because again, you have a lot of technical people available to you. Again, it does kind of help if you have a bit, bit of a technical background, but I don't think it is a must. Because again, if you really own a product, you can very easily gain the technical knowledge that you need or develop a network that can really kind of support you uh, with that knowledge as need be. So even if you don't have a technical background, don't worry about it. You just need to have a passion for B2B marketing. Um, and hopefully now you have a better understanding of what this is and you can make that choice. So now what I would like you to do is just take a few minutes, a few moments, list what are some of your key takeaways from today's session so just going to think about what are some of the things that you have learned that you can apply as you get back into your into your day-to-day -day and your careers uh, what are some of the things that you have learned which you did not know before um, something that you could really use to your advantage so just give you a few seconds to do that and then I'll kind of do a recap of what some of the key takeaways are in my opinion at a higher level from this session. In my opinion, these are the key takeaways from today's session. First off, B2B marketing is important. Remember, it involves high values, high volumes, critical uh, inputs to the business, uh, contributes to the competitiveness of the business. So B2B marketing is important. Next, we talked about B2B versus B2C. They are similar, but not the same. So B2B marketing, B2C marketing, they do entail similar or fun, more fundamental marketing concepts or strategies, but B2B marketing does have quite a few differences. And that's what we kind of talked about in detail. And that's where we had talked about, you know, we talked about more complex products, more complex services, complex purchase decisions, um, and long buying cycle and do all those sort of things. So that's where the other piece that you need to understand that you are dealing with more complex decision making process. And a key concept within that was uh, the buying center or multiple stakeholders. So you really need to kind of understand, you know, the dynamics around that who all are involved and how you can, uh, you know, best uh, address each, each individual's uh, or meet their needs or, or their perspectives to be successful in, in the B2B space. 
And then we had talked about those B2B marketing strategies. And at a high level, I think one theme that unifies all of those strategies that we talked about is the long-term perspective. So remember, we talked about relationship selling. We talked about customization. We talked about personal selling, we talked branding. We still talked about value selling. All those things or all those strategies are long-term in nature. So that's what kind of really makes B2B marketing different. And that's something that you need to really can understand and have that kind of approach as you get involved in this side of the business that you need to have that long-term perspective in mind. How do you can develop that long-term relationship and that should drive your marketing program or all your marketing strategies. And lastly, it is a really great career option uh, for marketeers. And traditionally, all the marketing majors, they like to kind of go and work for uh, B2C. And I was no different. Uh, but luckily, I got onto the B2B marketing side, and it has been a very rewarding experience. So that's why I really can encourage you all to consider that as an option. So before I let you go, I do have one last question. Are you ready for a career in B2B marketing? And I sincerely hope that your answer is, hell yes. So with that, I would thank time. Uh, these are my contact details. Uh, I'm very active on LinkedIn, so would love to uh, stay connected and hear from you. Uh, I look forward to uh, seeing you the next time. I've got a few other sessions that I've lined up and uh, on B2B sales, B2B branding. I'm very passionate about those areas and they really kind of build on the introductory discussion that we covered today. So hope that you got some good value out of this session and look forward to seeing you in the future. Thank you and have a great day and look forward to seeing you again soon. Bye-bye.